Fuller. What went wrong? That's like six bucks worth of fucking tire shine on the fucking floor. I'm gonna have to get another job just to pay for what you dump all over the floor. Hey guys, Sean again, Custom Offsets, Custom Offsets TV on the YouTube. This is gonna be another episode of Shit I Never Knew. This is episode number, lucky number 13. And this one's definitely driven by you guys. But it's a fun one because this is one of those things that we sit around the shop and talk about all the time. If you can imagine, we go through wheels and tires probably worse than any of you because we have the addiction real bad and that's usually why we've all ended up here because we've got just a, a passion for wheels and tires. So when it comes to different tires, we have tried it all. We've tried to run the most expensive stuff because we wanted to be on the gram. We've tried to run the least expensive stuff because to get on the gram you also have to have light bars and um, halo lights and all that stuff. And then we're, we've run the stuff in between and sometimes we'll even run it Fuller, your checklist, remember? <gasps> Pilot with no checklist, crash and burn. So what we've done is we've started by probably buying, you know, we didn't have much money when we built um, the Avalanche, Custom Offsets Avalanche. So we went with the cheapest tires that were on the market at that time and that we knew of or have kind of heard of. And then we've gone to, with CO2, because of the size we wanted on it, it was one of the really high-end, more expensive tires. And of course, on all the different vehicles of the folks that work here and some of the vehicles we have, we've run some of the other mud tires. So we've gotten to try out a ton of them. Um, some guys were the first ones to put a set of Aturos on, and they sold those trucks with 35,000 miles on them. So we've actually gotten to see them go the distance. CO Avi had a set of uh, Federals on there for, I think, 20,000 miles when we sold them to one of our friends that was running Instagram for quite a long time. And then he ran them for another, I believe, year. Put another 15,000 miles on them. So we've gotten to try the different stuff out and that's all we want to do is share back with you what have we learned so far. So my special guests today are the Toyo MT. I'm going to call them the MT. On the introduction, I'll give you the full name. From now on, it's going to be Toyo MT, Federal MT, so on and so forth. So this is the Toyo Open Country MT mud tire. This is the Nitto Trail Grappler MT. This is the Federal Karaja MT. And this is the Aturo Trailblade MT. And we chose these four fellas because we've run them. We sell the absolute most of these four and they've got a lot in common with each other and I think that's why they are the most popular tires that we sell. But this is a good um, taste of everything that we sell the most of. And that, we, and that we've run the most of. So what I'm gonna try to do is talk about price point. We'll talk a little bit about warranty, which leads us right into some of the issues on all four of these guys. And we'll just keep comparing them and try to answer your questions. If you guys want to leave comments and throw in some more questions, we can come back at this. There's probably a billion questions, but I wanted to answer like the top three or four that we've been getting a ton. So obviously the most important thing when you go to buy tires is going to be price point because you've also got wheels to consider and suspension and all that. So that's probably the easiest one to just kick off with. So if we talk price point, we're going to start at the bottom, which is exactly what we did, like I said, when we built the Avalanche. And that's going to be your uh, Federal Karaja, the Federal MT. So this guy right here. And if you look at him, it's got a really, really wide tread pattern. It's got a really, really luggy look to it. And it's probably, you know, it depends on how you judge, but in my opinion, this is the most aggressive looking of the four of them. So it just looks like something, I used to have the uh, Tyco Bandit back in the uh, 1980s. This is the kind of knobby, crazy tire that used to come on the old Tyco Bandit race truck. So I think this is the most aggressive in your face tire would be the Federal Karaja. And for a set of four of those shipped, as of right this minute, obviously pricing is always variable. 426 for four of them on your doorstep. I'm gonna make that less. Wow, well, four. Per four, did I? $826 per four. I was getting ahead of myself with that per four thing. So it's 826 for a set of four of these. And these are all I'm talking about 33 
by 12.50 R20. So they're 33 inches tall, 12 and a half inches wide, and they fit a 20 inch wheel. I'm gonna talk, th these are different sizes and we'll get into that, but that's what all these prices are so that it's a straight heads up comparison. And then the Aturo MT, this fella, and you'll notice that he looks a lot like his friends over here on this side, the Toyo and the Nitto. It's a very similar tread pattern. Um, they stay pretty consistent with kind of an elongated side tread and then up the center they've got these hooked uh, lugs and then a super aggressive sidewall. You'll see that when you look at sidewall of this guy compared to this guy, this is definitely a more aggressive sidewall. I'm gonna leave him there. So that's the Aturo MT. And for all four of those, you're talking 955 per four. Okay, now we come over to the other world and you're gonna see why we have these two together and then we have these two together. So I'll do the front one. This is the Toyo Open Country MT. That bad boy is coming in at 1,000. 532 per four. So huge jump um, into a different world. Here's the Nitto trail grab. And you can see these fellas side by side have super similar tread. Somewhat similar to that Aturo. So just at a glance, if I pull those guys all together and step out of the way, you can see that there's this elongated tread on the side, and then there's this hooked lug in the center. Extremely different from, you know, a little bit shorter, a much shorter with a cutout, much shorter with a cutout, and then almost like a C-shaped center and leaving a line right up the center on this guy, on the Karaja. So those three, I would call them all cousins as far as tread pattern. And then this guy's kind of like that uh, distant relative that doesn't look like his friends. So the Nitto is gonna come in again at that higher price point of 1520. So $1,520 per four. And those are just our buy four tires, have them shipped and land on your doorstep price within the lower 48. But to me, that's a good way to compare them. So here's the obvious separation, right? You can see in the same exact size, the Federals and the Aturos are gonna run five, almost 600 less, right around 550 to 600 less. Almost half the price for a set of Federal Carajas is a set of Toyo Open Countries. So a lot of people come out and say, then why would I ever, ever run these two guys? Is it because they got a better warranty? Well, we keep looking up the warranty and as a warranty stands, like a mileage warranty, none of these are gonna hold one. They're all mud tires, they're all MTs. They have no idea what you're gonna do with these. If you're gonna go jump in ditches and you're gonna go tear them up on rocks and stuff like that, they can't warranty a tread that's made for off-roading. And I know a lot of you are just gonna, you know, hit the mall or go to the Walmart and meet or just take them up and down the highway as a daily driver. And you're saying, well, then, then can I have the mileage warranty? Well, there's no way to separate the two. And they can't just, you know, distinguish by the look of your truck, whether you've been jumping ditches or just going to the meets. So for that reason, I believe, and I'm making some of this up, it's just, you know, what I've learned or how I feel about it. Um, they're not offering a warranty. So that one's easy. I would just put a line through it and say there isn't a warranty. We've already covered price point. So why then would you pay almost double for the Nittos and Toyos? Let's talk about some of the issues that we hear and I'm gonna debunk some of them and then I'm going to support some of the others. So one of the ones I always hear is, I got these new mud tires and they're throwing rocks over the side of my truck, this tire's junk. Well. You got 12 wides or 14 wides, they're sticking four, five, six, seven inches outside your fenders, they're all gonna throw rocks. 
every single one of these is going to pick up gravel and it's going to fire it up the side of your truck. So, you know, that's on you. Keep it inside the wheel wells if you don't want your paint nicked up. Otherwise, just accept it as part of the beast. However, the Federal Karaja, if you look at how wide the tread is, I can use this marker a little bit to give you an idea. This thing could pick up markers and throw them at the side of your truck. If you look at some of these other ones, it's a tighter squeeze, especially in here. You can barely get the end of that marker in there. I don't know if you can see that okay, Fuller. See how far out I can go. It's, it's, it's a tighter fit in between the lugs. This guy, you're gonna fit it all day. I mean, in here is a massive spot. So obviously it's gonna throw, you know, golf ball size rocks could fit in there. Have I noticed that personally? I don't think so. I think because most of what you're driving on is gonna be standard size gravel and it's gonna get into both of them. So when guys say these throw bigger rocks, sure, I guess I could believe that. I have not witnessed it. So that argument I would say is kind of a half truth. And if you live on a gravel road, you shouldn't buy mud tires or you should just accept the fact that it's gonna throw them. I just accept the fact because I want that aggressive look. Wearing funny is a big one. So I don't like Federal Carajas because mine completely wore out the inside of my tread and this is still like brand new. You don't have a cheap tire issue, you have an alignment issue. Whenever you get new wheels and tires, I would always go get an alignment. You don't have to, but to drop the $100 to save $826 is the right thing to do. Because what'll happen is it'll literally wear, it'll cup, it'll wear uneven and start to howl like crazy. Having alignment and having a tight front end is gonna make the difference on whether these guys wear right. My experience, we've gotten, I sold them at 17,000, he did another 15. So 32,000 out of a set of these that were still going because we rotated every three to 5,000 miles. Every single oil change we rotate. The Aturos, We've gotten 35,000 miles, and then he sold the truck, Justin, one of our guys here, sold the truck at 35,000 miles with a set of Aturos, and he still had like 40% tread on it. So again, rotated every 5,000 miles and got all the miles in the world. Either one of these could have done the 40,000 mile mark without thinking twice. These guys, everybody all over the place will tell you that these go 40, 50,000 miles as long as you rotate. So my, my thought on where these, would, would be the guarantee, in my opinion, if you're doing good rotation. These are, I'll bet you any money, they're gonna go the same distance with proper rotation. But I would bet that they're a little softer or there's just a touch more wear. So my final answer is I wouldn't spend the extra money for wear reasons on those guys. Jump in if I say something wrong, Fuller. So rotating every three to 5,000, sidewall bulge and or splitting so what i have seen and i saw one uh federal do it for sure is literally it looked like a band or a belt broke inside of here and then they got a big bulge right in the middle of their tread and it was a fairly new tire but we warranted it out and it was covered so something like that um belt breakage in the first however months of ownership was covered and we absolutely did cover it and um, so did federal so we didn't have an issue there these guys i don't know of any where that's happened in a turo i think the only one i've heard of is what a couple guys have had where the tread or the lugs seem to start to crack or separate and it was the same thing if it's within the right time frame i want to say it's a year but i don't know that for sure don't quote me on that you can ask the question and we'll look it up and get back to you but if it doesn't make any sense and it's not typical, it's, it's usually gonna be covered by warranty if it's a pretty new tire. So do you have, have we seen more issues with either bulging or um, tread separation or cracking in these two versus those two? From my experience, yes. So if, if you want the insurance plan on bulging and uh, any kind of separating, I would lean towards the Nittos and the Toyos and that's why you're paying twice as much for them. The next one is gonna be um, vibration. So we'll take a ride a little bit later and we're gonna show you what mud tires do versus stock tires because a lot of guys will buy a vehicle, take it down the road and say my tires are junk because I can feel every crack in the road. Welcome to mud tires. 
that's how it's going to be and we'll take a ride in a Hummer and kind of show you what the um, tires are like on that thing. So you'll get the normal mud tire vibration out of all four of these guys. With this one, we have seen a little bit of balancing issue, but not much. And what it is, is the tire is out around. So on a machine, when we ship them to you, it'll, it'll tell us it's balanced and technically it is. But when you put it on a vehicle and put some weight on there, because the tire is out around or you know, some uh, Bill Nye the Science Guy reason, the tire does, does vibrate and shake at certain speeds when it's under load or at certain speeds. These guys, we've run into the same thing. So we've had more come back or have to be sent back or warranted or hassle related to it balanced out just fine on the machine. We sent it out, the customer put it on the truck when they get to 65 to 70 or 72.5 to 76.5, the thing's got a vibration at that speed. So I've seen that more with the Aturos or heard it more. I don't have any Pareto charts to prove it, but I've seen it more here. I don't see it as much here. If you have a good alignment, if you're doing good rotation, we have not seen the out around in the balancing issues as far as vibration in the truck when you go down the road with these two guys. So again, that would be another one that I would say, sure. So let me write those two down just so that Fuller's got the snapshot. When it comes to issues, I would say um, tread and belt. Issues early. So early on in the life of the tire would be one that we've seen. And when you go with these two, that's where you see that issue. And then, um, what was the other one I just said? Fuller vibration. Vibration out of round. be a second issue so you, you know you you could say but Sean these guys will cover it under warranty so I'm still gonna take the risk and I'll say but yes what can happen sometimes is if your local shop says that this thing is out around and it's vibrating it's a bad tire we have to figure out is it a bad wheel is it a bad tire so you're going back and forth you may have to do some uh, road force balancing to figure out where it's actually happening if it's really just the wheel or just tires. sometimes you got to peel them apart sometimes we have to have you send the entire tire to us so that we can test it out and get it to a turtle and they can test it out and the whole process of figuring that out can be really stressful and take a bunch of time um, a lot of times we'll take the risk but the problem is you'll ultimately be on the hook if it all comes back that it's fine and it's something with your vehicle because you have to you have to consider that if this is a good product and it's been shipped all the way back and said to be bad and it's found out to be good, that somebody's gotta be on the hook for that if it was your truck causing the issue. So is it covered usually? Yep. Is it a huge hassle? Absolutely. So that's where I'm starting to hear guys say, I saved $700 and went with these guys, but I had a bulge issue and had to go through their warranty process and it was a pain in the ass for three weeks or whatever to get federal to back it up, which they typically will, but it's time to go and get the new tire put on, the time of shipping and all of that. These guys, I haven't seen that. So a lot of times what I'll tell people, I don't want to summarize yet fuller, but I keep wanting to. Let me just make sure I got everything. Miles and longevity went through that. Oh, sizing. So something that we've noticed, and we didn't even catch it at first until we started running them on our trucks and people were asking what size they were. If I look at this Toyo, right? If I look at Mr. Toyo, and I measure from where the sidewall meets the tread to where the sidewall meets the tread, this is a 12 and a half wide. And if I just dump a tape on there, you know, kind of get an eyeball measurement, it's about 12 and a half from that seam to that seam. If I do the exact same thing on the Aturo and go from the same seam and the same seam, this one measures right around 12 and 3 quarter. Here's the problem. That's a 12 and a half wide. This is a 13 and a half wide. 
So this should be an inch wider and it's only about a quarter inch. Is that what I just said? Yeah, about a quarter of an inch to half an inch wider. Obviously using a metal tape on a rounded surface isn't kosher. So it's about a half inch. That's 12 and a quarter and this is 12 and three quarter. So it's running about a half inch narrow. And you'll hear people with the Turo say that, that once they see them on the wheels, they feel like they run narrow. That half inch is the difference when you have this 12 and a half mounted on this 12 wide wheel. See how this sidewall is perfectly straight up and down in this, um, the side tread kind of pops out past the wheel. On an Aturo, same size, you're gonna see that start to bend in. And the reason is you're missing about a quarter inch and a quarter inch and it starts to pull it in on the sidewalls. And that's what gives you that narrow look. And when I put my 12 and a half wides on my 12 wides on CO2 on our custom offsets build, the big white truck, we had the same thing. We, we instantly could see the slightly narrow of the Aturo. So if that narrowness drives you nuts, that is another reason we've seen people spend the extra money. Let me talk about it in general, and then we'll go take a ride. So you could get these fellas for 826 to 955, or you could get these fellas for about 1500 bucks. People keep asking me, Sean, which one should I get? Let me put it to you this way. If you live on the edge, you don't mind taking a little bit of gamble, and you wanna save that seven, $800 to maybe end up getting wheels, to maybe pay for most of your lift kit, to maybe also mean you get light bars or a custom headlight build, you should buy these. That's exactly what we did, that's what we do today. We still run these on our Avalanche. We still had these on quite a few of our trucks. We just recently switched over, ran these on CO2, pulling a 12,000 pound trailer all over the country. They ran great, no issues, no vibration, no separation, no nothing. Sold them to my buddy, Steven. He, he paid a fortune for them because they were still worth a fortune even with 15,000 miles on them because they held up just fine. So if you want more out of your build, get these because then you can buy more stuff. If money is not an issue, I would always buy one of these two. Which one of these two? Whichever one you want. Whichever one's in stock. That's how I feel about Nittos and Toyos. Whichever one is currently available, that's the one I buy. I don't have a preference between the two. I've run both of them. Same thing here. If I want a really aggressive look, I go here. If I want a more typical look, this looks like these guys. So I'll run this if I'm trying to look like these guys. If I'm trying to look like an RC Bandit from back in the day and be that badass with those crazy aggressive tires, then I'll run a Karaja. So should you buy these or those? You have to decide that yourself. Are you trying to save six, 700 bucks but willing to gamble that you might have some issues with either vibration that you could just ignore or if you had a warranty issue, then you have to deal with it. Here's the thing that people don't realize. You could buy these, have one tire completely go to hell and you could buy a new tire for about 200 bucks and still have saved five or $600. So when I really get confused is when you save the money and do this, but then you get super mad that it takes three weeks to deal with a warranty issue. You've saved so much money, just buy an extra one and then turn it into a spare or buy an extra one and then sell it on Craigslist when the new one comes in or buy an extra one and just keep it in your room because it'll look sweet next to your bunk beds. My point is, if you wanna save the money, do it, but know that there's some risk involved. If you have the money and you wanna be on the gram and you wanna have the hottest, newest, you know, best tires on the market, then I think you've gotta go with these two guys. And like I said, when I put them side by side, they're horse apiece. You can see you've got a luggier sidewall on this guy. You can see it's a little cleaner less aggressive sidewall on this guy. The tread patterns are in the same ballpark. They both look tough as hell on a truck. And they're all pretty much offered in the same sizes. Fuller, did I answer your question? Should we go for a ride? Let's do it. So that is, in general, the comparison of the four. The next thing that we wanna talk about is a lot of guys are buying these, throwing them on their truck, and they're saying, my crossers are junk because I can feel them underneath the truck. Guess what? That's a mud tire. All of these are going to feel that way. So we're going to take a quick ride and just kind of show you what it's like to ride on a mud tire. 
because some people are buying mud tires for their first time and they don't realize that you're going to hear them. They don't realize that you're going to feel them. They don't realize that it'll be in the steering wheel and it'll actually be in the steering and braking. So we're going to just take a run and we'll talk through that as we take a ride in the Hummer. Okay guys, like I said, we'll take a ride in the Hummer. What I wanted to show you was these are the stock wheels and pretty much stock size tires. The width on those, or the contact patch, I should call it, is about 11 inches. These mud tires are only about 12 inches. So you're only talking an extra inch of contact patch from those like eight inch wide stockers to these 14 wides. But I wanna show you the impact that it'll have on the driving. Let's go. So like I was saying, when we got in the Hummer, it came with the stock size wheels and tires. We went leveling kit on the front, which is just leveling keys, bring up the front like two inches. Then we put the 14 wides with like 35 13s. It's a metric size, but it works out to be about 35 13s. The minute I drove it, I was just reminded and amazed at how much you can feel the lugs in the actual tires. And if you look really closely fuller, I don't know if you're gonna be able to pick it up on camera, but my whole steering wheel, I'll exaggerate it, is constantly doing this. And what it is, is it's the lugs on those tires feeling all of the grooves and um, imperfections in the road. So it's, it's instantaneous that you feel that ride quality change. And I don't mind it whatsoever because I want the look of those mud tires. But some people are like, you know, something wrong with my tires, they must not be balanced right. No, you went from a highway tire to a big, grippy mud tire that's bouncing off of the old pavement. So the other thing that I noticed, and you'll see it at this intersection, is when the road gets all uneven like this up here, when I hit the brakes, those tires grab and the thing just pulls us over half a car length. And look at the steering wheels turn itself. Because they're so wide, they literally grab every imperfection in the road and every dip and bend. So you, know, you always see people test out their um, alignments by letting go of the steering wheel. If you do that with this thing, today it's gonna pull to the right hard. It just pulls completely off the road. Tomorrow, if I'm on a country road that doesn't crown at the center, it's gonna pull me into oncoming traffic. And then by pure luck, sometimes it'll go straight down the road and actually run in a straight line. And the reason is you went from this wide rolling down to this wide rolling down but with those mud tires, they're just grabbing everything and they just kind of pull it all up and down the road. And I think that's an important point for people to realize because you have to understand the difference when you go to drive it so that you don't think you got a bad set of tires. That's just mud tires. That's mud life, mud life. Oh, and if you're thinking about getting one of them intakes with the hole in it so it whistles every time you get in the throttle, don't, that's annoying. Fully, we almost hit that car. But we're in a Hummer for you, how is it? Okay, let's get this thing up to 70 and see if you can hear him howl at all. So if you hear that howl right now, that is your typical mud tire howl. Not bad, but if you're not rotating, it'll get louder and louder and louder and louder, and pretty soon you'll have to yell in the first direction because you can't hear a damn thing. So I realized that I spent more time on the Federal Garage and the Aturo Trail Blade, and the reason is that's what most people are buying right now, and the ones with the question of should I have bought the Middos and Toyos? That's the question I was answering. But I can tell you that, you know, if you've got the money, um, if, if, it's, if it's not a financial decision, you're, you're just gonna get more on the Middo and Toyo. You're gonna have less risk of uh, issue. You're gonna get a tire that just looks mean. It runs true to size and it just has that look and feel. Um, and, you know, in my opinion, I'm running them on a lot of my vehicles. So obviously I think that they're worth the money. Um, if you're not in that position, go for those garages, go for those trail blades. They're definitely worth it. You get what you pay for when it comes to uh, tires for sure, especially in the MT world. So that's pretty much it for our mud tire mania. Uh, next up, we're gonna do hybrids. So we're gonna bring you the Toyo RTs, the Ridge Grappler, the XT, 
and I think there's one more out there we've been seeing a whole bunch of them. That's basically a mud tire meets a highway tire, and it goes right in between there, and you end up with a mileage warranty and still a badass aggressive look. So keep up with us, make sure you subscribe to us, make sure you share. Uh, let us know your feedback. We know this one was a lot longer than we've ever done before, but I wanna keep trying different formats and giving you guys uh, different stuff to taste and let us know what you like. I know that you guys really love the Junior's um, spotlight video, which we did totally different, spent a lot more time on and a lot more time producing. So again, on this one, give us feedback, let us know if you wanna see a half hour of shit I never knew and uh, if it helps out. Peace.